this video, we're gonna run fiber internet from the house to the garage. Let's get it. So this is part of a broader project, brand new construction. We're trying to make my detached garage a home office. So I want something reliable and fast. And eventually we're gonna be upgrading 10 gig speeds in the home. Even if it's a short distance, if you wanna be going with fiber, the cable itself is a very thin glass. So there's another YouTuber who talks about this, but basically um, if a lightning strike ever hits, you don't run the risk of frying every device in the house, right? Because it's just glass. It's not like you're burning ethernet where there's copper wire. So hopefully this video might come in handy for someone else wanting to run fiber to a shed. Um, it's really not expensive, pretty easy to do. And uh, yeah, so let's start off with the equipment. You can easily pick up some fiber converters on Amazon, link down below. But in my case, I'm gonna be going with something a little bit more professional. In the house, I have a UDM Pro router by Ubiquiti. And in the garage, I will be using their network switch. These devices have a built-in fiber port, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. So before you go out and buy the cables and the adapters, we first need to figure out the standards. So to start off, we have a choice between single mode and multi-mode fiber. Generally, single mode fiber is meant for a much longer distance. However, the price difference is really not that much of a big deal. And from reading online, people have just said just to get single mode and call it a day. As you can see, my home is about like 20 feet away from the garage and I've been using single mode for a couple months, no issues. So that's kind of what I'm going for and I'm gonna suggest for everybody else, but it's up to you. So next let's talk about the connector type guys. As you can see here, this is what's called an SC connector. Uh, it's really meant for internet providers like AT&T. Uh, generally would recommend staying away for that in the house use because um, those transceivers are a bit more expensive and harder to come by compatibility wise. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to look for cables that are marked LC. Basically, you have two pairs of wires, one for sending and receiving data, kind of plugs in like so, and uh, yeah, nothing to it. So let's circle back to that last step, guys, that fiber port we were talking about. You're gonna notice that even on the media converters, there's this empty little port here, and basically what's gonna go in there is these little transceivers you can see, guys. The reason being is because you have so many different standards and combinations, etc. Single mode, mode, side mode, all that kind of jazz. Um, so these devices will interface with the right fiber optic and the standard. Um, now this is called an SFP port, but you will also hear something called SFP plus, which is meant for gigabit speeds. Um, SFP regular is just one gig. These are SFP plus, but the modules themselves are regular SFP. Um, you know, so it's inter it's compatible with each other, like I said, but you know, um, and I generally will recommend this. I'll put this down, link down below. This is a single mode um, LC connect, um, transceiver. I have a pair, so the other one is in the garage already. And it kind of, it's super easy to install. You know, you just kind of slide it in there. Let me flip that down like that. And then the cable itself should just kind of like clip into like so right and you can see some activity light right there um eventually i'm gonna put some sp plus modules here but you know they are single mode so you know you just have to buy the right um whatever the cables themselves it doesn't matter whether you're running one or ten gig speeds as long as the cable is rated for single mode and lc that's all you got to worry about all right guys so let's talk about the fiber optic cable most important part Two things to bear in mind, very important. Bear with me, guys, please. Fiber is not like Ethernet. You can't just buy it in bulk and crimp it. Um, you need special machinery So because this is glass. So some two things to worry about. Number one, you got to buy a little bit extra. It's okay. Um, and you want to buy it in sections. I'm going to go over that in a bit. But number two, no kinking, guys, okay? You know, you're going to have a little bit extra, which you want. Um, you're going to want to coil it into you know reasonably sized coils. You don't want to weave it like your other cables, power cables, whatever. Um, I'll show you what I mean down the road, but yeah. So let's kind of go outside real quick. Um, the right way of doing this, guys, is to bury a, a conduit, aka a tubing, or you could run the fiber through the same conduit as your power cables that's going from the house to the shed, the garage, whatever it is. I don't really have the time right now, so <laughs> I'm gonna be using this direct bury fiber that I got off of Amazon. It's in this black jacket. It's um, it's meant to withstand the elements. And I got this edger tool from Lowe's. So I used that to make a bit of a trench to go across the grass. And then from there, I kind of just tucked it in against the, the rest of the foundation from outside. Um, 
And yeah, and there you go. But the important thing I'm talking about is a section, guys, right? You want to have separate fiber cables going to different areas. Um, because God forbid you, you run this entire cable from one to the other and, you know, you do some kind of housework and you break the fiber inside the house or you do some burying, some garden work outside and the fiber breaks outside, right? Because it's, it's, it's glass. It, it could happen. And so you don't want to have to end up ripping the whole thing out. So yeah, we're going to do it. You should be doing this in sections. So I got these neat little utility boxes from Amazon. Um, I made some big holes to go from the house to the outside, right? Um, you know, screwed it into the wall, nothing special, sealed it with some um, caulk and um, the cable itself um, going out. I just used some duct tape. I pretty much coiled the extra slack that, you know, you're, you're supposed to have, right? And I use these couplers, right? So I can connect the indoor run of the fiber to the outside run and, and even from the garage because the fiber is going low over here in the garage. And uh, yeah, we're good. So when everything comes in, guys, stop and test. I don't care how excited you are. Do not run this all at once. You, you want to first make sure that the cable is good, the adapters are good. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a really bad time trying to diagnose what is wrong with what, right? So um, everything just kind of slides into the place, no problem. Um, you should see some activity lights next to the SFP modules. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Um, if you have one of these individually clipped um, fibers, you just kind of have to unclip with your thumb and just swap them around uh, on the connectors and wait a few seconds. It's no issue at all. All right, so got the pipe through there, as you can see into that box I was talking about. Um, the tube gonna keep going up. I made a hole already up there that you saw before. So basically I'm using these, these like industrial um, stickies and some zip ties. It's a whole kit I bought up of Amazon. And there you have it guys. So what we're gonna do, basically I'm gonna have a vacuum inside of here and I'm gonna hold like, um, I'm gonna cut my hand against the vacuum suction here. And on the other side, my wife is gonna be feeding this yarn through it. So this way, I'm going to try to retrieve this yarn on the other on this side. And uh, when it comes out, you guys are going to see the next step. All right, so it snapped. Um, so I didn't want to make another trip to get a uh, thicker cord, so I used Cat6, but it only goes so far because of all the bends that we have here and over there. So I used it in tandem with the cord to pull the Ethernet through, and then I taped fiber to it, and we're gonna pull it, the fiber to that side. But yeah, just get thicker yarn. Don't panic, it takes took like a good minute, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. And uh, there you have it. So you can see I have a Unify switch, which provides power and data to a bunch of security cameras, as well as um, the Wi-Fi access point. So I have Wi-Fi in the garage. But uh, yeah, um, stay tuned for the grand finale, guys, when everything is complete. But uh, yeah, happy fiber.